and welcome back to Rara's Ventures. Today we are out and about visiting Fishbourne Roman Palace and Gardens to share with you what to expect whilst visiting. If you have only just joined and would like to help support Rara's Ventures, please hit that subscribe button. First, I would like to share a little about Fishbourne Roman Palace and Gardens, which I have quoted from their website so I give you the right information. Our charitable aim is to enable people to enjoy and learn about and have access to the heritage of Sussex. Sussex Archaeological Association is a registered charity that opens historic houses and gardens to the public, corrects six fully accredited museums and undertakes and encourages research through our library. Archie collections and small research grants we rely upon income from admissions, donations and membership to care for the 10 listed buildings, 6 scheduled monuments and a registered park and garden. We do not receive any government funding. Help preserve your local heritage by becoming a member or donating, volunteering or visiting our sites. We host a, a fine identification service and offer a variety of talks and conferences on the archaeological and history of Sussex. We hold archaeological collections for the countries of East and West Sussex, including the award-winning Collections Discovery Centre Fishbourne Roman Palace, in partnership with the Neuron. So there is a small bit of information about Fishman Roman Palace. Before we go on, I just want to share a little about the parking that is accessible for school trips, people, small buses who have mobility scooters, wheelchairs, walking frames. So do not forget to bring your blue badge as there are disabled parking bays. You're allowed to bring assistance dogs throughout the whole of your visit. They also have two wheelchairs that you can loan out whilst you're visiting, but I'd strongly advise that you pre-book them before you visit if this is something that you feel that you will need. They also have disabled toilets, which you will need a radar key for. If you do not have one, you can ask a member of staff. This is also something that I have done a vlog about, which I have left the links to to take you directly to the site so you're able to order one if you need one. All links will be down the bottom in the description. There is a gift shop and a calf which we will be sharing with you as we go round as well. Now we are going to start our tour around Fishbourne Roman Palace. So let's go! So we are now at the mosaic floors. I'm now going to be showing some of the information about the mosaics. Again, I've quoted this from their website, so I give you the right information. Fishbourne Roman Palace houses the largest collection of in suit mosaic floors in Britain. Many of these were laid at a time of the construction of the palace around AD 7580, which makes them some of the oldest mosaics in the country. The original palace had approximately 100 rooms, most of which had mosaic floors. Of these, just over a quarter survived to some degree, ranging from small isolated patches to almost complete floors. Mosaic survival has been far better in the remains of the north wing of the palace. Here, over 20 mosaics and fragments of mosaics can be seen inside the modern cover building. In addition, substantial fragments of five mosaics were discovered in the west wing of the palace during the 1960s, 
excavations but there was no plan to erect a cover building to protect them. They were reburied for their own protection. Three further fragments were discovered in the southern half of the West Wing during the excavations in 1987-88. As they were beyond the boundary of the Roman palace site and potentially at risk, they were lifted, conserved and put on display in the North Wing cover building. The earliest mosaics at Fishbourne tend to be black geometric patterns on a white background, something that was popular in Italy at the time. The designs may have arrived in pattern books and were adapted to suit local requirements. The mosaics probably also came from Italy as there would have been no one in Britain with the necessary expertise. The materials, however, were local. The white tesserae are of lower chalk and the dark grey of limestone. The designs vary in complexity from a simple black and white checker enclosed by a black border line to extremely complicated designs on the mosaic in room N12. This superficially appears to be the preservation design but closer inspection reveals destructive elements which add to its appeal. One of the most unusual mosaics is the fortress mosaic which was discovered beneath the cupid on a dolphin mosaic in 1980 when the latter was lifted for conservation. This had a central panel divided up to 16 squares each containing a geometric design. The remains of the nine different patterns survive. Around the central panel is a remarkable border representing a fortified town wall with three horses of masonry. T-shaped castellations, square corner towers and gateways double to the north and single to the east and west. So there is some information about the mosaic floors and there is more information on the website which again the links will be all down below. So let's carry on looking around. Okay, so we have just stopped at the cafe and had a nice cup of coffee and a slice of cake. I must say it's quite yummy. I wasn't sure if they'd be open or not, but they are for takeaway just sitting in the green, which is really nice, especially on a beautiful day like today. They offer wheat and gluten free and they have um, different teas, coffees, and when COVID's over, they do offer lunches as well but at the moment they are just offering snacks and ice cream when they are open they also offer things like sandwiches jacket potato or see your tea and your cake okay so i just want to share a bit about the cafe and what they kind of offer hopefully after covid it will be all open and you'll be able to stop for a nice bit of lunch right, and so I just want to share a little bit about the cafe and it is accessible for wheelchairs, there's lots of space and room which you'll be able to see in the pictures. So we are now going through the gardens and I'm going to share a little bit of information about the gardens with you. I have posted the information from the website so I give you the right information. The Roman Palace is unique in Britain in having a formal garden 
that has been replanted using the original late first century bedding trenches. These have survived centuries of later plowing discovered by archaeologists during the excavations in 1960s. They showed up as dark grey looms against an orchid colour clay and gravel subsoil. Samples were taken for analysts in the hope that trenches of pollen had survived from the flowers and shrubs that had grown in the garden. Unfortunately, only a small quantity of pollen from the weeds of cultivation such as plantain and daisy remained, as no positive evidence survived on site. Other sources of information had to be found. The Roman writer Pliny refers to box lining the edges of the pathways in his gardens. Certainly, this lime-loving shrub would have been very appropriate in the deliberately marble bloom of the Roman palace bedding trenches. Box was planted and had thrived. On the eastern side of the formal garden, the archaeologists found turning tree pits and post holes, which suggested an original arrangement of trees or shrubs planted against the trellises. Indeed, it finally referred to Expella fruit trees planted against the trellises in his garden, air of rustic simplicity than an otherwise formal setting. As Pella apple trees have been planted at Fishbourne, a large tree pit was found towards the western side of the garden. An important imported Italian cypress has now been planted here, but not without problems caused by the local climate. This reflects the problems that the Romans must have had to contend with when they imported the large number and range of plants that were required to stop the formal landscape and vegetable gardens that they created in and around the palace. Beneath the surface of the garden, the archaeologists discovered they ran from the remains of the base of what is assumed to have been a water storage tank in the northwest corner of the formal garden. One line of pipes probably fed a pool in the entrance hall, while others supplied small semicircular basins set in recesses in the box hedges. There is evidence for there having been in the angel between the ends of the north and west wings of the palace. This comprises a dark, humorous, rich soil containing heavily abraded pottery, suggesting that the soil had been intensively cultivated. It also had its own water supply provided through wooden pipes with iron collars. Limited excavation to the south of the palace revealed an artificial bed in trenches, what may have been the basis for a column of statues. Excavation is on the east of the palace in the mid 1980s uncovered for semi formal gardens.
So we have come to the end of our visit at Fishbourne Roman Palace and I hope that you've enjoyed the visit as much as we have. They have a lot of different things to see and interact with here. It is all accessible for people in wheelchairs, mobility scooters. The only part that I would say that may be unsteady is going around the garden as there is small stones, so shingle. So if you're in a wheelchair, it may be a little bit more difficult to push. But as you saw, we took the mobility scooter that managed absolutely fine. They have made it so one side is not as deep with shingle as the other side, which you can ask and they'll point out which side will be easier. They also have hearing loops in case you're hard of hearing and there's downloadable app to download to listen to parts about the museum etc. Obviously I'll be leaving all the links in the description below and on my website in case you wish to check that all out before your visit. They also do tours around the Roman Villa for schools or members of the public. Again, find more information on their website. We would like to say a massive thank you to Fishbourne Roman Palace for letting us come along to visit them so that we can share with others what to expect whilst visiting. I would like to also say a massive thank you to Hubby for doing the filming today and a big thank you to all you for watching. And if you are new and would like to help support the channel, please hit that subscribe button as that will really help support what we are trying to do. Thank you for watching and we will see you very soon. Lots of love and take care. Mwah, bye!